Hi everyone, my name is Kaustu Kale. I hope you guys are doing fabulous. So today on the sixth day, our topic for today is unlisted pre-IPO shares. Now, unlisted shares basically means those shares which are not traded on the stock exchange. They can be shares or companies which are startups, or it can also be in companies which are large and established companies, public limited companies who might go for IPO in the next couple of years. I would today brief or touch upon those companies which are unlisted pre-IPO, which will go, which might go for an IPO in the next couple of years. Now, when you look at or when you try to invest in unlisted pre-IPO companies, what are the parameters and what are the things that you have to keep in mind? The first thing is liquidity. Now, since these shares are not traded on a stock exchange, they are more of an over-the-counter trade or over-the-counter investment. So when you are investing in such shares, you have to assume that the liquidity will not be very favorable and will also depend on the company to company that you are investing in. That is where fundamental research of the company will come into picture. Important point is when you are real, when you are investing in a share which is unlisted pre-IPO, since there is no price history, you cannot go for technical research. You will have to only look at fundamental research of the company. This is, this is what it is. Now, coming back to liquidity, since it is over the counter, it doesn't have a recognized stock, it doesn't trade on a stock exchange, you will have to look at the liquidity part and it is an over the counter thing. You will have to sell it to the limited sellers who initially sold you the stock or you will have to find new buyers. So that is the liquidity part. Time horizon. Now uh, companies do announce that they have IPO plans in the next X number of years or Y number of years, depending on company to company. You have to track those news and announcements. You have to track it company wise. And then at, as a thumb rule, Assume that you will have to remain invested for at least three, five, seven years also, because the, there is a peculiarity because of certain regulations that once the company gets listed and if you're holding the share, the shares get locked in and you cannot sell it for one year. So in unlisted, again, keep a longer time horizon, five years, seven years, three years is at least minimum, five years, seven years is better. That is time horizon. Now the third part is risk. The risk because of the low liquidity and the longer time horizon, there is a certain risk involved. Hence, do consult a financial advisor or do your own due diligence in terms of fundamental research in which company you are investing. Go for a good promoter, good industry, all of that. And then depending on that, invest in the company. That is basically related to risk. So what you can do is you can have a certain part of your equity allocation to unlisted shares considering that it's a very small allocation. That is what I would recommend. Now coming to the returns. Returns are obviously dependent on the company to company. You have to research about the company, company and then decide and then wait for the company's prices to move up in the unlisted market. Wait for probably uh, an IPO to get announced so that the prices start heating up assuming you are invested in a good quality company and then decide whether you want to exit it before the IPO or you want to stay invested till the IPO is announced, IPO is done and then exit after a couple of years after listing on the stock market. So this is what you have to look at in terms of unlisted shares. Thank you so much everyone. This is a peculiar product, but it is recommended to, to invest in good quality companies, good quality unlisted shares and have a small part of your equity allocation. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.